in this video. Discover the context for J.B. Priestley's socialist beliefs and who was the only person to draw in a bigger audience than Priestley on BBC Radio during World War II. John Boynton Priestley was born in Bradford, Yorkshire on the 13th of September 1894. His mother died shortly afterwards. Despite such an early misfortune, Priestley had a comfortable and stimulating upbringing. His father was a schoolmaster who introduced his son to an influential circle of socialist friends, an early indicator of how his political tastes would develop. Priestley opted to leave school at 16, convinced that a wannabe writer could learn more from the real world than from sitting behind a classroom desk. He therefore got a job as a junior clerk with the local wool firm Helm Co while trying to establish himself as, in his own words, a writer, poet, storyteller, humorist, commentator, social philosopher. With the outbreak of the First World War in 1914, Priestley, aged 20, joined the infantry and considered himself fortunate to survive the next few years in which he experienced explosions, gas attacks and the many other horrors of frontline service. On leaving the army in 1919, Priestley studied modern history and political science at Cambridge University, but academic life didn't suit him and in 1921 he relocated to London with his new wife to become a freelance writer. However, personal tragedy struck again when his wife died of cancer, but he quickly remarried and would have three wives and many more lovers in his 89 years. However, he also achieved professional success as a writer. His career as a playwright began in the 1930s and theatre became the form for which he was best known, with social responsibility being a recurring theme of plays such as Dangerous Corner, The Linden Tree and of course An Inspector Calls in 1945. When the Second World War struck in 1939, Priestley got busy writing and broadcasting his Sunday night postscripts on BBC Radio, a series of 10 minute talks and personal reflections on the conditions of wartime. These were immensely popular with peak audiences of 16 million, bettered only by Prime Minister Winston Churchill's public speeches. Nevertheless, they were cancelled mid-war allegedly because they were critical of the government. Priestley's name was also included on fellow writer George Orwell's post-war list of people who were sympathetic to communist Russia, a bit of a no-no, which came close to making him an enemy of the state. Anti-establishment affairs continued with Priestley being a founding member of the campaign for nuclear disarmament in 1958 and the rejection of a Queen's honour of a peerage in 1965. However, he did accept the Queen's Order of Merit in 1977 and honour recognising distinguished service in the armed forces or science or literature or culture. He was also awarded the Freedom of Bradford in 1973 and a larger than life statue of him now stands in front of that city's National Science and Media Museum. Priestley died of pneumonia in August 1980. If you want this information in written form, then check out our revision guide on the Twinkle website. You can also find a whole load more revision videos on our YouTube channel. Please check those out. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.